It's around two minutes past nine now, according to uh, Estonian time. So may we uh, start? And for a very beginning, we would like to share uh, an introductory video with you, after which uh, we can continue with a brief introduction of our uh, morning coffee and uh, our uh, speakers attending. Would you please switch off your mics as well? My name is Anto Livat. I'm uh, the head of Executive MBA Final Defense Committee, uh, Management Department Lecturer in Estonian Business School and today's uh, moderator. May I also remind you that our today's uh, session will be uh, recorded, so feel free to uh, share the information and uh, you may also like to uh, watch the recording if you like after the uh, seminar. This uh, brief uh, morning coffee should take around uh, one hour and is designed to happen in a rather cozy uh, morning like um, atmosphere. So, again, make yourself comfortable and uh, enjoy. Uh, if you are not familiar with uh, the Speak Blue button environment, uh, you may like to take care uh, that your mics are uh, switched off if you wouldn't like uh, everyone to hear you. And uh, also, uh, you may like to turn your cameras off. Uh, However, we very much welcome you to uh, contribute to our discussion, asking the uh, questions. Uh, so if you like to do so, you uh, may easily uh, switch on your uh, mic and camera, uh, preferably. So we are also able to uh, uh, see and recognize uh, you. There is also a um, public chat room. Uh, next to uh, the slides uh, you can see and uh, you are also welcome to ask all the questions uh, you may have in this uh, public um, chat room. But now dear uh, guests may we uh, ask uh, from you what are your expectations for this meeting and what were actually the intention for you to wake up uh, so early and joining in the seminar. You should uh, the poll options uh, in front of you on the screen so would you please choose uh, the most appropriate option and let us know what your expectations are. All right, so the poll results will be published. Uh, we see that uh, very most of uh, us are here to figure out uh, more about the uh, master studies uh, and programs at EBS. There are also some people who, who 
like to learn more uh, what is the knowledge and skills they lack the most uh, uh, some of us are looking for a confidence and uh, probably are quite likely join, joining our uh, EBS family and well I can't see anyone who's just killing uh, his time here during the Covid uh, outbreak Thanks for sharing and uh, may I now uh, introduce uh, our um, speakers today uh, after uh, the brief introduction. Mike Franz Wahl, uh, the head of uh, MBA programs, is going to uh, take over and let you know more about uh, MBA studies uh, in Estonian Business School. And Rauno Pello, our uh, alumnus and doctoral uh, students uh, with a long time uh, business background, is going to share his experience and hopefully also let us know what was the value, hi Rauno, <laughs> uh, of your studies and whether you've been able to implement what you uh, experienced in, in EBS. Uh, Katri Gerem, our head of uh, MA program and also the chair of marketing uh, department, is going to uh, discuss with you uh, the specifics of MA program. John Paul Broussard uh, is uh, our professor responsible for uh, a new uh, nano degree option uh, named Quandamentals. And uh, John Paul is willing to uh, provide us with a bit better understanding on what is behind this uh, quite a tricky, complicated, uh, however fancy uh, uh, title, Quantumentals. Uh, Lena Raymond, our admission specialist, uh, is also here and uh, let you know about the admission procedures. Uh, there's also a Q&A session uh, in the end. Uh, Kaisa Linderburg, uh, our study consultants, and Thomas Tanneberg, vice rector for external relations and business development, uh, have also joined us uh, to answer the questions you may have in QA session. Or if you like to ask them right away, feel free to do so. Use the public chat room or just uh, write uh, the private messages to any of the people, speakers you like to, to ask the questions from. So you can also remain so-called invisible uh, for the private chat if you like for, for any reasons. Um, um, you are probably a bit uh, familiar uh, with Estonian Business School uh, already. Uh, that's uh, the one and only business university in Estonia, which is considered to be uh, one of the most digitalized and entrepreneurial minded societies uh, in the world. And also in Estonian business school, we really uh, try to uh, uh, cope with the challenges uh, posed uh, for uh, contemporary uh, business education. Uh, May I point out uh, briefly three of those uh, during the school-wide uh, 19 outbreak, uh, uh, many of your companies have been uh, in need to uh, reorganize the business processes and probably you've been also spending some time on thinking about digitalization. So the digitalization uh, also is one of the uh, crucial aspects of uh, of business programs and in Estonian business school after the uh, uh, virus outbreak we've been successfully able to uh, hold more than 500 lectures and seminars in our blended learning environment uh, and combining synchronous and asynchronous uh, learning with in-class meetings is something what every business school, including Estonian business school, uh, need to pay more attention on, I think. Second of all, we have uh, recognized that our students or uh, learners appreciate more freedom and choice to design their own educational paths and tracks, which uh, 
meet their own uh, needs the best. So we uh, also encourage you and our uh, students uh, to try out different things, maybe also smaller units of the program, so-called nano degrees in Estonian business school and trying to figure out how you can benefit from uh, maybe a smaller uh, units of uh, EBS studies uh, um, to pursue your prof professional career or overcoming your business challenges you're facing. And the third trend is definitely uh, the fact that business people with the knowledge and skills on artificial intelligence and uh, uh, data management will be uh, in a high demand and also the very valuable assets for uh, every uh, business organization or uh, company. I don't think that MBA graduates definitely need to uh, become the computer engineers or uh, data scientists. However, every MBA graduate and why not the MA graduate should be aware of uh, how data can be used for value creation and uh, business model innovation, for instance. So ABS uh, cooperate um, with uh, more than 60 partner universities uh, worldwide. Uh, we have a, an active alumni community and also the campus in Helsinki, if you uh, prefer to uh, continue your uh, studying uh, somewhere else than, uh, than Estonia. And we also try to provide a flexible organization of studies uh, uh, which uh, enables you to combine your studies uh, with your uh, work and uh, family life. But to move on, uh, may I kindly ask now uh, my dear colleagues to, uh, to take it over uh, from here. And they are very much delighted to uh, uh, demonstrate and share more how those trends are uh, met by our programs and in terms of design as well as delivery. And Mike from Sfal, our head of MBA programs, uh, is the first one here. So Mike, feel free uh, to share and uh, the so-called floor or the uh, slides are all yours. Thank you, Anto. So my name is Mike Wahl. And it's not very cozy actually to sit in this chair in this morning, but uh, I will try to explain in some in some words uh, what are the main points in our MBA program. So I will focus on three questions when I'm uh, telling you about this program. So first, uh, the first question is why why you should study, uh, study and why we are teaching such uh, things uh, like MBA, Master of Business Administration. The second question is who and whom. And the third question is, of course, uh, always how. The how question is not very really easy to answer, but I will try to explain you how we are trying this. So uh, this why question, is also quite tricky, but as you have, have mentioned, uh, the world has changed and we have to learn all our lives. And uh, also the changes are very quickly and uh, the world is very dynamic. And um, that means that we have to know how we can develop ourselves the whole life and earn money. And also the society needs smart and wise people. And um, the fundament of every society is actually business, as you know. So uh, that means we uh, will focus on business, business administration. And the second thing is how to make career. So who are uh, the students? Uh, who we expect to, to learn on our uh, master program, uh, all kind of students who have studied something else than business administration or economics. So from any disciplines, 
uh, if you have a bachelor in any discipline uh, at the university, you can come and join our MBA, MBA society. Uh, the second very important thing in the MBA is that we expect that you have some uh, very strong work experiences. Uh, it is not so uh, theoretical like uh, the MA program, for example. MA program is much more scientific, uh, focuses more on theories. Uh, we, in our program, will focus on skills and sharing our experiences. So it is very important to learn from each other also and share all these experiences. This is then who. So and also there are then different levels. I will uh, later on uh, explain. Please, uh, next slide. Thank you. So now uh, we are coming to the structure to our MBA program. So we want to have uh, smart business people who are learning their whole, whole life. And actually we have a classical MBA program which starts with a general uh, knowledge about business administration. It is, is uh, divided in different models. And uh, it starts with general management, or in design model and controlling model. And it is finishing with a graduation model. And in between, you have many, many different elective models. And now, if you have already a master degree in some other uh, discipline, you actually can uh, take uh, the program in one year. That means that you just taking the obligatory models, general management, organizing, controlling, and graduation model. So that means that you are able to uh, earn an MBA degree in one year. If you have a bachelor in, in uh, uh, business administration, then it is even possible that you start with elective models. You start with elective models and taking the graduation model and also are able to create uh, to earn your degree in one year. But the classic MBA uh, takes two years, of course. Could you please put the next slide? So the, here you can see uh, uh, deeper now the explanations of the models. So it starts with general management and inside of this uh, general management uh, model, we have uh, normal uh, courses like strategic management and innovation, leadership and ethics, managing people and organizations. This is the fundament of business administration, how to manage people, how to manage in a long uh, view, and of course, uh, when the uh, experience, when the uh, when it's uh, the it changes changes very quickly, so we need um, uh, uh, innovation. We have to change and and make our processes always better. And uh, people, of course, are also very important. The next um, uh, model is then organizing, and here we have different organizing uh, elements like project management then operation management. Also, we have here marketing and sales and uh, emerging technologies uh, for business because of technologies are changing very rapidly and we have to deliver the newest knowledge. And also our students have to bring into our classroom the knowledge of the newest uh, technologies and and ways of managing and uh, working in a in a modern environment. Uh, so next slide, please. Thank you. So then uh, we have also a controlling model because of uh, we have to know also something about finances and managerial accounting, also uh, corporate finance, managerial economics and also 
on the end, we will have then a graduation model, which starts with coaching, a simulation, a quiz where we are testing the theoretical knowledge, what is achieved in two years. And also uh, we are testing uh, our uh, how, how good we, we are in, in, in uh, creativity uh, in writing a case study. So as I, uh, in my, uh, as, as I said in the beginning, we have a lot of elective models. That means that you can uh, take uh, models and, and uh, courses what you specially need. So we have a, a very wide selection of elective models providing students any kind of subjects you need uh, and of course uh, we are expecting that you will come again and again because of we will have a, every year new interesting elective uh, models what you can choose and uh, actually you then can achieve uh, the so-called nano degrees if you have uh, already taken uh, nanos so uh, that's all from me. If you have uh, questions, I will then later in our questions answer uh, session uh, answer all your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mike. Uh, we did have a questions uh, uh, from Mr. Uh, Sharma, uh, Alina Raymond, our admission specialists. Uh, will be uh, taking care of the first one. But the second question was about uh, uh, human resource management or uh, elective models, uh, which are the closest to the HR. Uh, what would you recommend him to go for? Namaste, Sharma. Mr. Sharma, Ankur. So uh, actually in our general management model, we have a human resource related course. Uh, it is uh, named Managing People and Organization. It takes uh, together the human aspects and the organizational uh, aspects of, uh, of uh, business administration. So, and actually, uh, as you know, uh, in any, uh, any uh, courses, you have to uh, take into account the human aspects because without human we cannot make any any business i hope you got your answer of course you can write me and and i will explain you deeper then thank you so, so much uh, mike uh, and welcome uh, rano uh, so may you share your experience um, and uh, also reflect a bit maybe what has been the value of uh, of the studies in EBS for you in terms of your uh, uh, business challenges and, and, and projects as well. Good morning. I hope everybody can hear me. And yeah, it's, it's, it's that early morning. I think it's easier if the other slide is on, not just my name and what I do. But basically, I, I've been connected to EBS for a long time now. Uh, I started way, way, way back with my bachelor's studies. But in then when I got myself together and finally graduated the bachelor's studies, then I decided to go to the MBA in digital society in EBS, which I graduated last uh, summer with cum laude. And now I'm doing a PhD in management at EBS also. But Instead of saying like, uh, what kind of uh, options do you have and, and such, uh, I can say that there was two things that were so valuable for me, uh, starting the MBA studies in EBS, and, and that was the reason why I chose the MBA, is that it's, uh, so, uh, it's very like personalized. You can uh, do all your homeworks based on your own work and the work experience and you can sh there's a lot of people who will share their own experience because the most of most of the classes are organized as seminars you talk a lot you share what you have learned and then you can manage how, how this theory and all these other parts are uh, actually valuable but for me it's been uh, majorly valuable to have the mba and have the actual understanding of business world because i'm not business person per se but I'm consulting on, on many different levels and different companies. And, and after graduating the MBA, it's, 
it's even more easier and and i've noticed that the clients also uh, trust my my suggestions and, and analyze is much more better because uh, somehow they believe and see that i i can talk numbers now uh, which is uh, not something that uh, normally a designer can do so i can um, i can do that and it's been a cool experience and as, as you see i'm yeah, back at the best and now also i'm lecturing a little bit and giving uh, sharing my knowledge back to the back to other students but most of the uh, not go into a super long monologue i think i'm here more if you have questions about the studies and how it's uh, how it's going and how it was but the two years you don't even notice that it's two years um i remember our course mates we were just after graduation discussing that we just entered and suddenly everything was over because everything is so fast paced and it's it fits really well with your work because i know that the, i work full time my uh, course mates everybody was full, uh, working full time so it's something that it was easy to do while while at the same time working so but anyhow if anybody has questions uh, about student life i can totally answer i don't know how to this with uh, without uh, any proper questions one of our guests uh, is uh, paying a bit of attention on our bh the uh, program uh, yep. well now it's not too common to pursue phd right after uh, graduating from mba program since it's designed for business professionals mostly why did you decide to continue with the phd program uh, that was a secret tiny plan because during my studies uh, i found some holes in the theories and because i i my I don't know. My biggest value is actually in, in research. So it, it felt because the, all the design work that I'm, I've been doing is also in qualitative research. So it, it was kind of a normal step. And I think Estonia and some other European countries, few of them are the only ones who, where you can do this thing that you can go uh, straight from MBA to the PhD. Most of the times you need you are you need an MA degree. So just in case if somebody is planning to do a PhD in Ottomi best, then they need to also figure out what are the requirements because yes, you have uh, you have uh, there might be a need for an actual MA degree. But yes, EBS has PhD in management. Okay, how do you feel about this uh, COVID nineteen outbreak? Uh, any pressure on the labor uh, market already? Uh, anything you have recognized uh, by taking a look at your colleagues, partners, and uh, other people around? How bad? I don't know. Is it? I have to say that I'm I'm quite lucky in in my field. It's it's not so so difficult, especially also being part in academia. So I I my real life is on a pause anyhow. So it it, it doesn't it didn't uh, like. Uh, it's not influencing me so much, but I've noticed that I think most of the companies who postponed uh, their digitalization and digital strategies are now like figuring out that maybe we shouldn't. So I think uh, for the next couple of years, there's going to be a lot of work for the actual digital transformation. Thank you so much, Rona, for uh, your thoughts and uh, Rona is going to stay with us so feel free to uh, write him in a public or uh, private uh, chat rooms uh, if you like uh, welcome again Gatri, uh, and uh, may you now continue with the ma program uh, the floor is all yours good morning everyone my name is Gatri and i'm uh, head of the ma master program and also head of the Department of Marketing and Communication. And uh, now I will introduce you the MA program. Uh, so um, uh, this is the specialized business uh, master's degree at EBS, uh, where we give you general business competencies, but the main focus is on in-depth knowledge of the selected field of your specialization. So you will get uh, in the value of uh, 45 credit points uh, of one selected specialization and this will be also complemented with uh, 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 this will be also complemented with uh, master thesis so uh, 
this is for people with career aspiration who want to become senior managers in their selected specializations. Why should you do the MA in EBS specifically? Um, I would say that uh, our value uh, also regarding MA is that we have a lot of uh, quite practical uh, content in our studies. So MA combines really traditional, more academic and theoretical approach, but uh, also gives a lot of practical insights. And uh, we also give you an, uh, a chance to enrich your studies with an exchange semester. So you can go and study full semester at uh, one of our partner universities uh, through the Erasmus program. And we're also proud to have uh, the most international student body and the most international faculty uh, among the business master programs. And what else could I say, uh, what differentiates the MA program from MBA is that uh, MA is uh, part of the so-called three plus two education system. So you can continue in MA straight after obtaining your bachelor's degree. And it doesn't require previous work experience. Although at EBS, we see that we still have a lot of people coming also to MA that have quite a few years of uh, previous work experience. So it's a combination of students who are straight from their bachelors and students who have um, some work experience. And uh, now I will talk a little bit about uh, the organization of the MA st studies. Here you see the semester plan. I will not go too deep into that, but, but you see that uh, the specialization, the 45 credit points, is uh, divided uh, into the uh, first, second, and fourth semester. And during the first semester, you will also get uh, a module of advanced business course. So this guarantees that everyone who graduates uh, EBS MA program has also good general business knowledge so that you're not the only specialist in your specialization field but also understand uh, business as a whole and then in the second semester we have a module on professional research skills that uh, helps you from one hand to uh, prepare for your master thesis, but also gives you knowledge for uh, doing business-related research. Uh, the third semester is uh, the semester where you have a quite wide choice of putting together your own studies. Uh, we strongly recommend you to take uh, up the semester of exchange studies, but if it's not feasible for you, then uh, you can also put together your um, elective modules uh, here in EBS. And the fourth semester is the uh, last part of the specialization together with the master thesis. And as you know, we have uh, three specializations, uh, which you can see on the next slide uh, now. Um, Lisa, if you can change the slide, please. Uh, thank you. The specializations are marketing, accounting and finance, and management and leadership. And all those uh, specializations are um, made, up through, made up by three uh, building blocks, so the smaller nano degrees. So in marketing, uh, we have divided the specialization into three parts. First, looking on how marketing works then on how communication uh, works and then we look at the consumer side or how human beings uh, work in the context of marketing. The accounting and finance module combines uh, uh, one nano uh, dedicated to more to accounting and then two nanos uh, more dedicated to finance which uh, John Paul will introduce uh, shortly after me and the management of leadership specialization is built up so that we start with a broader view on uh, the global scale on how uh, economy uh, globally influences management and leadership. Then we go to the organization or company level to look at the processes inside the organization. 
and during the fourth semester of the third part of the specialization the students uh, will more focus on themselves as leaders so this takes the personal managerial level and looks how you personally can improve as leaders so this is a quite a short and fast overview of the MA program. If you are uh, interested uh, in more details, please drop me a line in the chat. I will answer. I will keep my eye on the chat. Or then uh, you can also contact me later to ask questions about the MA program. And then I will give uh, over to John to introduce the fundamentals. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Katri. Uh, you may like to go through the questions in the public chat room as well, if you feel there is something which could uh, answer better or more uh, in terms of the program. So would you contribute? Uh, however, uh, I can't see any uh, one willing to post the questions publicly. So as you as you said, let's move to John uh, and uh, fundamentals. Is this uh, fancy title you're going to open uh, open here? Uh, uh, so uh, all the questions are welcome right after the presentation or during the presentation, if you if you like. Thank you, uh, Katri and Anto. Uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm here to just talk briefly about uh, one of our new offerings called Quantum Mentals. Uh, and if I can get to the to the slide, everybody can see the uh, just the description. And the biggest question that I have from most of potential students and or even some colleagues is, what is this word Quantum Mentals? And the title Quantum Mentals is a new aspect in the investment arena in the financial markets. Because you can think of making investment decisions from two main, I would say, endpoints. It's not necessarily always that way, but you can have really heavy duty quantitative type models and you can have, I would say, more intuitive, uh, uh, fundamental type of approaches. And so the quantitative models are the equations and the algorithms that you as the investment decision maker would program to a computer to make decisions once certain signals occurred. The but, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything to do with the financial health of the company. The fundamentalist, on the other hand, tries as best as possible to evaluate the financial health of the firm, its ability to be sustainable in markets like today. Even when times are rough, the quantum mental model will still make the same decision, but the fundamentalists may change their mind. So the quantum mental structure is a combination of those two. And we have found evidence that being able to put together those, or I would say concepts of a quantitative equation that takes the human behavior out of the decision, as well as to incorporate some of the intuitive decisions that employ onto those algorithms, that that combination allows for an investment decision that is more optimal, or if you want to think of it that way, is, is a better return for the amount of risk that you're taking. I'd like to make a, a, a combination or a connection to one of the statements that Anto made in his introduction uh, about the whole concept of data. Uh, whenever we are using quantum mentals or fundamentals, uh, finance is really all about, uh, and Bello mentioned this too, is about numbers. What that means is that we have to gather a lot of data. So what we are going to cover in the first offering, as well as the continual offerings, because the first offering is just an intro about the overall structure of quantum mentals, uh, is the basics of what data to gather, how to gather it, how to structure it so that you can make some of these rules-based decisions that are connected with the quantitative models 
as well as some of the intuition that is required whenever you're analyzing a financial statement to investigate the financial health of the investment or the financial health of the company, because you could be using a bunch of companies or a basket of companies. You might not be investing in a single company as well as you could be in trying to investigate what's going on in the, the overall market. So in some, Quantum mentals is just a combination of these rules uh, that allow the machine to make the decisions as well as the fundamentals to get an indication as to the sustainability, the financial sustainability of your overall decision. And with that, I hope that you can get a big sense of it's the big picture. It's a broad stroke of a, of a painting as to what we're going to be covering. So, um, I will leave it to, uh, I'll leave it back to Anto. If you have any questions, feel free to post or contact me uh, through the EBS website and uh, I'll be able to answer. So Anto, back to you. Thank you so much, Sean Paul. Uh, who do you think could be uh, the potential students uh, for this nano degree or what could be uh, the profile of uh, of um, uh, the applicants and uh, another uh, side of the pipeline what is the graduate uh, profile you see so I, I mean from from the input side the, the student profile the way that I'm structuring this offering is is that I'm not having a heavy duty requirement of background I, really basic understanding of Mathematics, basic understanding of accounting is somewhat, uh, I would say, uh, understood that and assumed that you would have at least an interest in those. You do not have to be a mathematician. You do not have to be an accountant. So anyone who has an interest in making better investment decisions is a potential student learner in this structure. As far as the output and as far as the end result is concerned, it is that in the financial markets, one of the things that we've learned from this COVID uh, experience that we're going through is that you have to be flexible and therefore having a background and training in the quantitative aspects, as well as in the, uh, in the, I would say more fundamental aspects and being able to put those two together is extremely important and extremely valuable. So anyone who wants to participate in the financial arena, participate in the financial markets uh, is one that would benefit substantially by putting these two concepts together. John, according to uh, the students' feedback, you're one of the most appreciated uh, lecturers. Uh, we haven't been paying pretty much any attention on the uh, teaching methodology today. Uh, what is your approach on that? Uh, and is there like any difference uh, between MA and MBA programs delivery you uh, consider important? Well, I, I mean, from, from a teaching and a pedagogical perspective, I always try to tell them what I'm going to cover, cover it and tell them what I told them. So every course, every session, every meeting, I try to do that. Sometimes, it's, sometimes it works better than others, et cetera. But that's my overall structure. And the courses difference between MBA and MAs, these concepts apply across both. Obviously in an MA program, or I think that's kind of intuitive in an MBA program, you get into more depth. Uh, an MBA is more breadth, but you can still cover the same topics and you can still cover, I would say the important concepts. It's just in the MBA program, you get more into, not only do you know how to drive the car and know how to park the car, but you also need to know how to get into the engine if it's not starting to get an indication as to what's not working. And that's, I think, the biggest difference between MA and MBA. Although in the MBA, you still need to know how to drive the car. So that's one of the one of the keys. So any other questions? Well, I can't see right. Uh, now, but uh, John is also sure, going here. to stay with us, so feel free to uh, chat with him uh, privately if you have uh, questions which uh, have a wider importance than uh, ask those in the public chat room. Uh, thanks again, John, and uh, let me offer the floor to Lena Raymond now, who's our admission specialist, and lets you know about all the, proced the procedures related to the admission. 
Thank you, Anto. So uh, I hope uh, those explanations of the programs uh, were clear. I'm also gonna try to answer some questions that were in the chat about uh, MA and MBA programs. Uh, we can put next slide. So uh, as here you can see the most uh, important information about both programs, for example, MA, uh, you can study in uh, two campuses. You can study it in Tallinn or in Helsinki. Uh, there is a bit different tuition fee depending on the campus that you choose. Uh, the degree awarded to you is Master of uh, Arts in Social Sciences. And uh, as Katri mentioned before, you can uh, specialize either in man management and leadership, finance and accounting, or marketing. Uh, when it comes to MBA, there are two different versions. So uh, there is one year studies or two year studies. And uh, there was question also how studies are organized. I'm gonna talk about it in the last slide of mine as well, but they are both in session-based formats. Uh, when it, both uh, of the programs are uh, delivered in English, uh, when it comes to MBA, you will get uh, a degree master in business administration. You can study MBA only in Tallinn campus for now. And uh, if you choose two-year program, then uh, as mentioned by Mike before, you can combine four elective models or nanos as called later on to specialize more in your field that you're interested in. But now let's move on to the admission. So you will know how to actually apply to our school. Uh, there, here are the most basic steps that you need to know. So if you're interested uh, to join us, then uh, first of all, what you need to do is that you should submit your application online. If you are a local student, then you do it through SAIS. If you are an international student, then you can use Dream Apply. And if you have admission related questions or you need more information about the process, we actually have it explained on EBS webpage step by step. But of course, if you have any other questions, feel free to uh, contact me. I will be there to help you out. Then what you more need to keep in mind is that every program has specific requirements. For example, uh, if you want to join one year MBA, then you have to have either master's degree or bachelor's degree, which is 240 ECTS. And also both MBA programs require at least three years of management experience. We do value uh, people management experiences and also leading processes. How you can uh, show it is that when you submit your application and also upload your CV. And if you are working in the field where you feel that maybe the leadership or management experience is not so clear, then uh, feel free to elaborate it on your application. And you will be also able to talk about it in your admission interview. So two-year MBA, you can apply based on bachelor degree and uh, it can be in any other field than uh, business administration. And also, as mentioned, you need three years management experience. And for MBA, MBA program, you need bachelor's degree in business administration uh, or economics. Uh, also, if you do not have this, but you're very much interested in joining, uh, there are opportunities uh, to join if you have done microeconomics, macroeconomics, uh, and financial accounting, or if you think that you have the knowledge, but you haven't managed to pass those subjects before, then uh, you will be able to take entrance exam at EBS. Then, we also, as the programs are in English, that we also need proof of a sufficient English level. Um, you can either do entrance exam at EBS. This is offered to the local students. Uh, for international students, you can either present internationally recognized language test, or uh, if you have previously studied in uh, uh, European country, US, UK, Canada, then uh, it applies to local and international students. Then you can uh, send us uh, information together with your diploma and uh, it might waive the requirement. All uh, of you will have to take the admission interview. It will be around 20 minutes and you will be able to meet uh, head of our programs, our lecturers, uh, also uh, 
administration staff and ask questions uh, that you're interested in. And uh, also, um, uh, they will ask uh, questions about you. They want to know who you are, what is your experience, and what are your outlooks when it comes to our programs? What do you want to learn during your journey here? Uh, you will receive admission decision right uh, around like week after uh, you have the admission interview. And uh, if everything goes well, you will receive either full acceptance or conditional acceptance. Conditional acceptance means that some part of your, uh, your requirements are not filled out yet. For example, for international students, if your documents are in the evaluation process by an ICNATIC, then uh, this is an option. And uh, last, if you get the positive decision, then uh, you can sign the study contract and uh, pay the tuition fee and you can join our studies. Uh, okay, and uh, maybe important dates for you. Uh, so if you're a local student, the application deadlines are 24th of May and 12th of July that you will have to submit your application in, uh, in size. And the difference is that we have uh, two admission interviews rounds. So it depends if you want to start uh, have the admission interview in May or you want to have it in July. When it comes to non-EU applicants, the application deadline was 1st of April and the admission interviews will be held uh, between April and June. And also for European countries and some uh, countries mentioned on the slide. Uh, the application deadline will be 1st of June and your interviews will be held online in June or July. Okay, and uh, we can move to the next slide. I will also try to answer uh, some questions uh, that we have. Uh, we had the question about the studies at EBS. So uh, something that you need to keep in mind is that our master programs actually start already in middle of the August. So from 14th to 15th of August, we will have the intro weekend. And it is uh, mandatory for all the master students, no matter if you are MA or MBA. So uh, this uh, session you cannot miss, miss and we will have uh, coaching in this session. So, and the study sessions are from Friday to Saturday from 10 to five. Uh, so, and uh, every second week. However, uh, please note that uh, the individual schedules might uh, change in accordance with your chosen elective models. Okay. Do you have uh, any questions to me? I see that there was a question about... Uh, Okay. There was a question about visa requirements uh, and uh, the situation that we have right now. Um, we like uh, we help every our international student uh, who uh, applies to EBS. We inform you about the state affairs, how they go. Um, we do it during the application procedure and. Uh, we look at the situation, how it goes. Uh, right now, uh, we wait till the beginning of May and then we inform you further on how to do. For us, the admission deadlines have not changed and the start study of studies also have not changed. Lina, there was also a question about uh, scholarship and how to apply. Yeah, thank you, Anto. Uh, when it comes to scholarships, then uh, you can apply for scholarships after you have received positive admission decision. So uh, that means that once you have received acceptance letter or conditional acceptance from us, then you will be able to uh, write, uh, a, uh, let's say, write a letter to the scholarship committee. Uh, there are uh, three questions that you will need to answer. Uh, you can find this on, uh, information on, on our webpage, and then uh, you can apply for the scholarship. Uh, the scholarships are usually discounts from the tuition fee, uh, which means that uh, you can get a percentage uh, 
or a discount from uh, the full tuition fee. And the scholarship committee decides whether it's 25%, 50%, 75%. Uh, so uh, this is how the scholarships go. And uh, also, I remembered, I'm sorry, uh, master students can also apply for uh, uh, state scholarship, Dora scholarship. So uh, when you go to admission uh, page, there is also one part that says scholarships, uh, which describes uh, in depth what you need to do to apply for them. Thank you so much. Uh, is there anyone who would like to ask anything uh, more from Lina? And I think Lina is also willing to chat with you in the public uh, chat room as well as uh, privately. And in case uh, there are some more questions, uh, um you'd like to discuss uh maybe not during our uh, brief morning coffee session uh, you may also like to uh, send lena an email and uh, figure out uh, all the things uh, what you consider important i see santos arriving so probably there are some more questions to come Maybe also when it comes to more specific what degree you have and how it applies and so on, uh, it's easier if you send me an email or write to me in WhatsApp so I can look at it more uh, in depth. Right now, I understand that uh, there was a question for a certain degree and how it applies. <laughs> However, uh, I will help you. Feel free to contact me uh, and I will uh, talk about it with you. Okay, uh, there's also a question uh, whether uh, one year program is 12 or 15 months. So probably uh, it's good to explain a bit how we work in terms of, uh, of the uh, semesters or semester wise. And Lina, you have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, now okay. you have um, when it comes to one year uh, MBA, then you have uh, two semesters. Uh, first semester starts from August and uh, finishes up in uh, January. And then second semester is from January up until June, mid-June. So uh, this is how it works. I hope it's uh, clear. Okay. Thank you, okay. Santosh, for your question. Okay. Well, I can't see anyone's writing uh, any questions uh, right now. And it's uh, 10 o'clock already. Uh, the time. Uh, flies as we uh, see. So, dear guests, uh, before we uh, close, uh, would you please provide us a bit of feedback on how do you feel about this morning coffee uh, format and whether it was uh, useful for you? We again offer you four options for a poll uh, count me in seriously consider it need to be convinced more or uh, maybe you find now that EBS is not a place uh, place for you and you can be honest uh, here it's anonymous poll by the way <laughs> Oh.
Well, what a lovely result. Uh, we see that 10 of you have answered count me in and uh, five more are seriously considering uh, Estonian Business School as the preferred option uh, to continue your life learning uh, journey. Once again, uh, thank you so much everyone, dear speakers uh, and guests. It was enjoyable uh, morning together with you. Uh, should you have any more questions, do not hesitate to uh, write or call us. Uh, and uh, we wish you a beautiful day ahead. Uh, the recording will be available uh, uh, soon, so feel free to uh, review uh, the things you consider uh, still important and relevant for you. Take care and stay healthy. Thank you so much.